Hey guys, it's Leia. Today we will learn how to solve integrals using trig substitution. Before we dive in, it's important to review derivatives of inverse trig functions because we will see a lot of integrals in this format. That means when you see an integral similar to these derivatives, you will most likely use trig substitution to solve the integral. This also means most of the answers will contain inverse trig functions. It is also important to review techniques of U substitution and trig identities. As I mentioned before, we will see integrals whose integrands look similar to the derivatives of inverse trig functions. Now we will talk about how to solve these integrals. First, our goal is to rewrite the integral by using substitution of trig functions for other expressions. Second, here are some helpful substitutions. If we see any of these three expressions in the integrand, then we use their respective substitution. Lastly, you might have to use substitution more than once. This might be because the integrand does not look like one of the three expressions above, and you want to format the integrand to look like it. Let's see an example now so we can understand how to solve these integrals. We have the integral of 1 over the square root of 4 minus 9x squared with respect to x. We first look at the integrand and refer back to the previous slide. We can see that this integrand is similar to one of the three expressions mentioned, the square root of a squared minus b squared times x squared. So we will set x equal to 2 thirds times sine of u, and that means dx equals 2 thirds times cosine of u du. Now we will substitute these into the integrand. We will simplify this and get 1 over the square root of 4 minus 4 times sine squared of u times 2 thirds times cosine of u du. We will simplify this even more by pulling out the square root of 4. Now we will use a trig identity. Remember, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So we substitute cosine squared u for 1 minus sine squared u. This integrand now simplifies to 1 third du because we can cancel out cosine of u. This looks like a simpler function to solve. We get 1 third u plus c. But because we use substitution, we need to substitute the values back to have the answer in terms of x. Recall x equals 2 thirds times sine of u, so u equals arc sine of 3 halves times x. We substitute this back in and we get 1 third times the arc sine of 3 halves times x plus c as our answer. Last example, we have the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 4. We take a look at the integrand and see that the denominator resembles the square root of a squared plus b squared times x squared. So we want to set x equal to 2 times tangent of u, which means dx equals 2 times tangent squared of u du. We substitute these values into the integrand. Next, we square 2 times tangent of u. Now we can see that we can pull out a square root of 4, which will cancel out the 2 in the numerator. This leaves us with 1 over the square root of tangent squared u plus 1 times secant squared u. Let's recall a trig identity. Tangent squared of x plus 1 equals secant squared of x. We can use this trig identity and substitute secant squared u in for the expression in the radical. Next, we simplify and get the integral of secant of u. We solve this and get ln of tangent of u plus secant of u plus c. Don't forget to rewrite the answer in terms of x. We had set x equal to 2 times tangent of u. That means u equals the arc tangent of x over 2. We substitute this and get an ugly answer. However, we can simplify this answer to the natural log of the sum of x over 2 and the square root of x squared over 4 plus 1 plus c, which is our answer. These integrals are very tricky to solve, and the only way to get good at them is to keep